Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. We have found so much freedom and truth and the true gospel, the full gospel. Andrew makes it so easy to understand and to grasp. This constant revelation all the time it doesn't stop. It is amazing. It is amazing. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm going to start a series talking about financial stewardship. I know this is everybody's favorite topic, especially from a TV preacher. Most people think, oh man, all you're after is my money. So just to kind of counter all of that and tell you that I'm just teaching this because it's, it's the Word of God and it's good for you, I'm giving this book away. It's entitled Financial Stewardship. I'm going to make a big difference talking about prosperity versus financial stewardship. I think the key to all of this is stewardship. But I'll be giving this book away. I have it not only in English, but I also have it in Spanish. Now, we aren't giving the study guide away because it's a big product, but we are uh, asking for a suggested donation on that. But I have this study guide in English and in Spanish. And then we have a DVD that has, I think it's uh, five testimonies or maybe even more than that, testimonies of people who have seen God really prosper them and sharing about how they did it. But what I want to talk about is financial stewardship. And the reason I, I'm stressing the word stewardship because the word steward means that you are managing the financial affairs of another person. And I think the whole key to prosperity, biblical prosperity, or prosperity God's way, is to look at yourself as a steward and not as an owner. I'm going to be saying a lot of things about that and going into more detail. But you know, anytime you start talking about finances, anytime a minister starts talking about finances, because we receive offerings and because we ask people to help us uh, financially to get the gospel out, people immediately think the only reason you're teaching on this is just so that you can get money from people. And they look at it as it's a gimmick, it's greed. That's one of the reasons I'm giving this book away. I don't know how you can say that about me because I'll be giving away tens of thousands of these books. If you're sitting here saying the reason I'm teaching on finances is so I can fleece you, you just either are lying or you're totally deceived about it. I'm teaching on this because it's the Word of God and people need to know how to prosper. And let me say this, that the number one reason that religious people primarily criticize a minister for preaching on finances is because they think it's all greed. And they will use a scripture like 1 Timothy chapter 6, I believe it's verse 10, where the love of money is the root of all evil. And I agree with that. I really do agree that the love of money is the root of all evil. Matter of fact, you know, I was just seeing some things about how this uh, Anthony Fauci increased his net worth over $5 million. And I tell you, I, I told some people, you just follow the money. The reason they were pushing all of these vaccines, which they have a vested interest in this, they're getting money from all of this. You follow the money and you find out why people do what they do. And on and on you could go. I do believe that the love of money is the root of all evil, but money's not evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And lots of times people who don't have very much money spend more time loving money, praying for money, desiring money than people who have their needs met. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. If you think money's evil, well, then you just ought to get rid of all of that filthy money, amen? Send it in to me. I'm just kidding, but uh, I'm saying that people that say that you, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil and they somehow or another make money out to be bad. Money is not moral or immoral. Money is just money. You could take a hundred dollar bill and I could use it to bribe a person and get them to do something that was against their conscience. And so I could use, I could take that money and use it for evil. Or I could take the exact same hundred dollar bill and give it to a person and say, you know, God just spoke to me and said that he wanted to bless you. He wanted you to know how much he loves you. And I could give that hundred dollar bill to a person and it would just totally bless them and it would be used of God. Money is neither good nor bad. It's the heart and money just amplifies what's in your heart. 
YOU KNOW, THERE ARE STATISTICS THAT SHOW THAT PEOPLE WHO HAVE WON THE LOTTERY, I ACTUALLY HAVE A uh, THING THAT I SAVED ON MY WEBSITE. I DON'T HAVE IT RIGHT NOW, BUT IT SHOWS PEOPLE. IT TOOK FIVE PEOPLE WHO HAD WON THE LOTTERY, AND I MEAN THEY WON MILLIONS OF DOLLARS. AND THESE FIVE PEOPLE, IT TALKED ABOUT HOW THAT THEY JUST TOTALLY WASTED IT. IT RUINED THEM. IT PUT THEM IN THE FINANCIAL BIND. THEY HAD TO DECLARE BANKRUPTCY. ALL MONEY DOES IS AMPLIFY WHAT'S IN YOUR HEART. AND IF YOUR HEART IS WRONG WHEN YOU'RE POOR, ALL YOU'LL DO WHEN YOU GIVE PEOPLE MONEY IS JUST AMPLIFY ALL OF THESE POOR DECISIONS AND POOR THINGS THAT THEY'VE GOT. AND SO MONEY IS NEITHER GOOD NOR BAD. IT JUST AMPLIFIES WHAT'S IN YOUR HEART. SO IF YOUR HEART IS RIGHT, YOU CAN HAVE MONEY AND YOU CAN USE MONEY TO BE A BLESSING. YOU KNOW, THE LORD TOLD ABRAHAM, HE SAYS, I WILL BLESS YOU AND MAKE YOUR NAME GREAT AND YOU SHALL BE A BLESSING, GENESIS CHAPTER 12. AND IF YOU USE MONEY CORRECTLY, YOU CAN USE MONEY TO BE A BLESSING TO OTHER PEOPLE. I'M GOING TO USE A LOT OF SCRIPTURES. LET ME REAL QUICKLY JUST MENTION SOME OF THEM. IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 28, IT SAYS, LET HIM THAT STOLE STEAL NO MORE, BUT RATHER LET HIM LABOR, WORKING WITH HIS HANDS THE THINGS THAT IS RIGHT, THAT HE MAY HAVE TO GIVE TO HIM THAT NEEDS. THAT SAYS THE REASON YOU WORK IS SO THAT YOU CAN GIVE. MOST PEOPLE WORK SO THAT THEY CAN LIVE. AND THEN GIVING IS AN EXTRA BENEFIT. IF THEY GIVE IT ALL, THEY GIVE ONLY WHEN THEY HAVE EXTRA. BUT THIS IS THE REASON YOU WORK IS SO THAT YOU CAN HAVE TO GIVE TO OTHER PEOPLE. 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 9, VERSE 8 IS, IN MY ESTIMATION, A DEFINITION OF WHAT BIBLICAL PROSPERITY IS. AND IT SAYS THAT GOD IS ABLE TO MAKE ALL GRACE ABOUND TOWARDS YOU, THAT YOU ALWAYS, HAVING ALL SUFFICIENCY IN ALL THINGS, MAY ABOUND UNTO EVERY GOOD WORK. THAT'S THE REASON THAT I WANT TO PROSPER IS SO THAT I CAN ABOUND UNTO EVERY GOOD WORK. YOU KNOW, THE LORD HAS GIVEN ME A VISION OF MINISTERING TO PEOPLE OVER TELEVISION. OUR TELEVISION BILL, JUST THE AIRTIME, IS OVER ONE AND A HALF MILLION DOLLARS A MONTH. AND THEN WHEN YOU CONSIDER, LIKE, WE'RE GOING TO GIVE THIS BOOK AWAY AND WE'LL GIVE AWAY, I DON'T KNOW, TENS OF THOUSANDS OF COPIES OF THIS, uh, IT TAKES US ABOUT SEVEN MILLION DOLLARS A MONTH JUST TO PAY OUR STAFF. WE HAVE OVER 1,100 EMPLOYEES WORLDWIDE. AND THE REASON I WANT TO PROSPER IS BECAUSE I WANT TO REACH PEOPLE TELL THEM THE TRUTH, AND I COULDN'T DO IT IF I DIDN'T HAVE MONEY. SO THE REASON FOR PROSPERITY, IF YOU UNDERSTAND IT CORRECTLY, ISN'T SO YOU CAN GET A BIGGER HOUSE, A BIGGER CAR, MORE TOYS. IT'S SO THAT YOU CAN BE A BIGGER BLESSING. AND MANY PEOPLE WHO CRITICIZE ME OVER TEACHING ON FINANCES WILL SAY, YOU'RE JUST PREACHING ON THIS, YOU KNOW, SO THAT YOU CAN GET PEOPLE'S MONEY, SO THAT YOU CAN GET THEM TO GIVE TO YOU. AND THEY'LL SAY THINGS LIKE, I'VE GOT, I MAY NOT HAVE MUCH. I DON'T LIVE IN A FANCY HOUSE, BUT I'VE GOT A HOUSE. I'VE GOT A CAR. I'VE GOT ENOUGH. I WOULD NEVER ASK GOD FOR ANY MORE. AND THEN THEY SIT THERE AND CRITICIZE ME. DID YOU KNOW THAT THAT ATTITUDE IS THE ONE THAT'S ACTUALLY SELFISH? YOU THINK THAT MONEY IS JUST FOR YOU. SO AS SOON AS YOU GET YOUR NEEDS MET, AS SOON AS YOU'RE SECURE, THEN FORGET THE REST OF THE WORLD. I'M TELLING YOU, THAT IS GREEDY. THAT IS SELFISH. AND PEOPLE WHO ARE SITTING AND SAY, I WOULD NEVER BELIEVE GOD FOR ANY MORE. THAT IS A VERY SELFISH ATTITUDE. IF YOU'VE GOT YOUR NEEDS MET, IF YOU ARE AT A LEVEL OF CONTENTMENT THAT YOU DON'T NEED ANY MORE, THEN YOU OUGHT TO TAKE THE THINGS THAT I'M GOING TO BE TEACHING ON PROSPERITY, AND YOU OUGHT TO USE THIS PROSPERITY SO THAT YOU COULD PROSPER AND BE A BLESSING AND HELP ME OR HELP OTHER PEOPLE PUT OUT THE GOSPEL. I'M GOING TO BE SHARING SOME THINGS WITH YOU THAT JESUS SAID THE GREATEST USE OF MONEY ISN'T FOR YOURSELF. NOW, THERE IS A NEED FOR MONEY FOR YOURSELF, BUT THE GREATEST USE OF MONEY ISN'T FOR YOURSELF. IT'S SO THAT YOU CAN BE A BLESSING TO OTHER PEOPLE. AND SO AGAIN, DON'T HAVE THAT SELFISH ATTITUDE THAT, WELL, I'VE GOT ENOUGH. I WOULD NEVER ASK GOD FOR ANY MORE. YOU OUGHT TO BE BELIEVING GOD AND RECEIVING THE FULLNESS OF YOUR INHERITANCE, WHICH PART OF THAT IS, IT SAYS IN 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 9, THAT YOU KNOW THE GRACE OF OUR LORD JESUS CHRIST, THAT THOUGH HE WAS RICH, YET FOR YOUR SAKE HE BECAME POOR. FOR YOUR SAKE HE BECAME POOR, THAT YOU, THROUGH HIS POVERTY, MIGHT BE MADE RICH. AND THERE'S PEOPLE THAT SAY, OH, WELL, THAT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT RICH MONEY. YES, IT IS. IF YOU TAKE EVERY VERSE OF 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 8 AND CHAPTER 9, EVERY SINGLE VERSE FOR TWO CHAPTERS IS TALKING ABOUT MONEY. 
AND FOR YOU TO PLUCK VERSE 9 OUT OF 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 8 AND SAY, OH, WELL, THAT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT THAT YOU CAN BE MADE RICH IN FINANCES. IT'S TALKING ABOUT RICH EMOTIONALLY, RICH IN YOUR RELATIONSHIPS, AND ON AND ON. I BELIEVE IT WOULD INCLUDE THAT, BUT EVERY SINGLE VERSE IN THOSE TWO CHAPTERS IS TALKING ABOUT MONEY, AND FOR YOU TO SAY THAT THAT DOESN'T MEAN RICH FINANCIALLY, THEN YOU ARE NOT uh, OPERATING IN WHAT THE WORD SAYS. YOU'RE TAKING IT OUT OF CONTEXT. IF YOU TAKE THE TEXT OUT OF ITS CONTEXT, THEN ALL YOU HAVE LEFT IS A CON. AND I'M TELLING YOU THE TRUTH, THAT JESUS BECAME POOR SO THAT YOU THROUGH HIS POVERTY MIGHT BE MADE RICH. THAT'S WHAT THE BIBLE SAYS. THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH MONEY IF YOU DON'T HAVE A LOVE OF MONEY, IF YOU AREN'T IN LOVE WITH MONEY, IF YOU DON'T LET THAT MONEY CONTROL YOU, BUT INSTEAD YOU CONTROL IT. AND I'M TELLING YOU, THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT DON'T HAVE VERY MUCH MONEY, AND THEY WOULD NEVER CONSIDER THEMSELVES A PERSON WHO LOVES MONEY, BUT YET YOU LET MONEY DICTATE TO YOU WHAT YOU CAN DO. THE WORD OF GOD SAYS YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO tithe. THE WORD OF GOD SAYS YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO GIVE OFFERINGS ABOVE THAT. AND THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU LET MONEY TELL YOU YOU CAN'T DO THAT. AND YOU ARE LETTING MONEY DICTATE YOUR LIFE. YOU'RE SAYING, OH, NO, I NEED THIS MONEY. I, I DON'T HAVE ENOUGH MONEY FOR MY RENT OR MY HOUSE PAYMENT OR GAS HAS GONE UP AND ON AND ON. AND BECAUSE MONEY CONTROLS AND DICTATES TO YOU, THEN YOU SIT THERE AND REFUSE TO FOLLOW GOD. THAT'S SIN. THAT'S WRONG. THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS THAT WOULD CRITICIZE ME FOR EMPHASIZING THAT GOD WANTS TO BLESS YOU FINANCIALLY, AND YET YOU LET MONEY BE YOUR GOD. MONEY TELLS YOU WHAT YOU CAN DO. IT'LL TELL YOU THAT, NO, YOU CAN'T tithe. NO, YOU CAN'T GIVE AN OFFERING. NO, YOU CAN'T BE GENEROUS. NO, YOU CAN'T HELP YOUR CHURCH. NO, YOU CAN'T GIVE TO THIS PERSON. AND YOU ARE A SLAVE TO MONEY. I'M NOT A SLAVE TO MONEY. I USE MONEY AS A TOOL. AND THIS IS SOME OF THE THINGS I'M GOING TO BE TEACHING. YOU KNOW, LET ME START OVER HERE IN LUKE CHAPTER 16. I WON'T GET VERY FAR INTO THIS TODAY, BUT THIS IS WHERE JESUS TAUGHT A PARABLE ABOUT A RICH MAN WHO HAD A STEWARD. AND THIS STEWARD HAD BEEN ACCUSED TO HIM THAT HE WAS STEALING MONEY. SO THE RICH MAN SAID, PUT YOUR BOOKS TOGETHER. I'M GOING TO COME CHECK ON THEM. AND IF WHAT I'VE HEARD IS TRUE, THEN YOU'RE GOING TO BE FIRED. AND SO THE STORY GOES ON. BUT LET ME JUST START HERE IN LUKE CHAPTER 16, VERSE 1. AND IT SAYS, HE SAID UNTO HIS DISCIPLES, THERE WAS A CERTAIN RICH MAN WHICH HAD A STEWARD, AND THE SAME WAS ACCUSED UNTO HIM THAT HE HAD WASTED HIS GOODS. NOW, BEFORE I GO ANY FURTHER, I WANT TO JUST EMPHASIZE HERE THAT THIS MAN WAS A STEWARD. WHAT THAT MEANS IS HE RAN THE FINANCIAL AFFAIRS OF THIS RICH MAN, AND it, THE MONEY THAT HE CONTROLLED WASN'T HIS OWN. IT WASN'T HIS TO DO WITH AS HE WANTED TO. HE HAD A RESPONSIBILITY TO HIS BOSS, TO HIS MASTER. AND HE WAS SUPPOSED TO BE USING THAT MONEY AND HIS POSITION IN ACCORDANCE WITH WHAT HIS MASTER WANTED HIM TO DO. AND THE REASON HE GOT INTO TROUBLE IS BECAUSE HE WAS USING THE MONEY FOR HIMSELF. HE WASN'T FOLLOWING THE LEADERSHIP OF HIS MASTER. DID YOU KNOW THAT ALL OF THE PROBLEMS THAT COME FROM MONEY REALLY BOIL DOWN TO THIS, THAT PEOPLE THINK THAT THIS MONEY IS MINE AND I CAN DO WITH IT WHAT I WANT. GOD'S WORD SAYS PAY A TITHE. GOD'S WORD SAYS GIVE OFFERINGS. AND YET THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM. AND I'M NOT AGAINST YOU. I'M SAYING THESE THINGS TO HELP YOU AND TO SET YOU FREE. GOD HAS CHANGED MY LIFE AND SET ME FREE. AND NOW I'VE GOT A, a CASH FLOW AND MONEY COMING IN THAT ENABLES ME TO BE ON TELEVISION AROUND THE WORLD AND TO DO THINGS. MONEY HAS BECOME A SERVANT TO ME. I AM NOT THE SERVANT OF MONEY. AND I'M SAYING THESE THINGS SO THAT YOU COULD be, BREAK FREE FROM THE CONTROL AND THE GRIP THAT FINANCES ARE. YOU COULD SAY THAT POVERTY HAS UPON YOU BECAUSE YOU DON'T HAVE ENOUGH FINANCES. I'M SAYING THESE THINGS TO HELP YOU. I'M NOT SAYING IT TO HURT YOU. BUT THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT YOU LOOK AT MONEY AND YOU SAY, THIS IS MINE. GOD SAYS GIVE, AND YOU SAY, NO, I CAN'T GIVE. AND YOU SIT THERE AND CHOOSE WHETHER OR NOT YOU'RE GOING TO FOLLOW WHAT GOD TELLS YOU TO DO. I'M GOING TO BE USING LOTS OF SCRIPTURES AND SHOWING YOU THROUGH MANY SCRIPTURES THAT, MAN, GOD TELLS YOU THAT YOU ARE SUPPOSED TO BE AN ABUNDANT GIVER, THAT GOD LOVES A CHEERFUL GIVER, 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 9, VERSE 7, AND ON AND ON. WE'RE GOING TO USE A LOT OF SCRIPTURES. AND MOST OF YOU KNOW THAT GOD TELLS YOU THAT YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE GIVING, AND YET YOU CHOOSE NOT TO OBEY BECAUSE YOU THINK, I JUST CAN'T AFFORD IT. YOU EXALT YOUR WISDOM 
above God's wisdom. And then you wonder why you aren't prospering, why God isn't blessing and prospering. It's because you aren't conforming to what He told you to do. So I'm saying these things that if you would adopt this mindset of being a steward and say, this isn't my money, this is God's money. Everything I've got, my car, my house, my clothes, my jewelry, any savings that I have, whatever I have, it's all God's. And there's a lot of people watching this program that you think, God didn't give me this money. I worked for this money. I got paid. This is, I, this is mine. I earned it. You may have worked for it, but did you know it's God that gave you any talents that you have, any abilities that you have? If you're able to function and if you're able to, you know, just be normal and go do a job regardless of what it is, it's God that gave you that ability. It's God that chose you to be born at this time, the most prosperous time, opportunities that the world has never had. For those that are in the United States, you know, this program has seen all over the world. Nearly five billion people can watch this program on a daily basis. So there's lots of different governments and, and nations that we're broadcasting in. But in the United States, we've got an unequaled opportunity to prosper. Now, the liberals are trying to take that away and, and make us all communist and socialist. And anyway, I'm not going to get started on that. But at this moment, anybody who wants to prosper can prosper. You didn't make that. There's other people that died to give you this freedom and this liberty. So what I'm saying is whether you realize it or not, God is your source. God's the one who chose you to be born at this time. God is the one who gave you your gifts, your talents, your abilities. God is the one who gives you your opportunities. Whether you realize it or not, God is the source of everything you've got. And He wants you to acknowledge Him. All He have to do is just, you know, stir the chemicals in your brain just a little bit. And I guarantee you'd be having the drool dripping off your chin. You couldn't do anything. God, God is your source whether you recognize it or not. So what I'm saying is if we were to just say, Father, everything that I have, even if I work for it, you're the one who gave me the opportunity. You're the one who gave me the strength, the health. You're the one that gave me my abilities. And I acknowledge you as my source. How do you do that? I believe that this is the reason that the Lord says, give me 10%. It's not because God needs your money. You know, it takes a lot of money to do what I'm doing. But God, I've, I've actually met a man who one of my employees went over and had this guy pick him up in his Bentley limousine that followed his other Bentley limousine. He had a whole, uh, I don't know, number of cars that were all Bentley limousines. He went to his house. This guy lived in a super mansion, and he had just bought, I think it was his 52nd or 53rd boat that day, and this one boat, it was a tanker, cost, I think, $153 million, and he had 52 or 53 of them. This guy's stinking, dirty rich. Now, I mean, uh, he gave me a very nice bag or a packet of uh, teas, and it was probably worth hundreds of dollars, but as far as I know, that's all he's given to me. I don't covet this guy's money, but I'm saying that there are people like that that have seen me on television, and God could touch them, and I could have somebody give me billions of dollars so that I don't need anything. But you know, if, if that was to happen, which it hadn't, but if it was to happen, I'd still be preaching the exact same thing because you need to recognize God is your source. And how do you do that? He says, give me 10% and give me offerings above that. The reason God asks you to give is not because He needs your money. Man, if I had time, I'm talking as fast as I can, but if you went over to Psalms chapter 50, I believe it's chapter 50 or 51, the Lord says, "I, you know, I don't need your offerings. He says, I own all of the cattle on a thousand hills. If I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. He's saying that the reason I asked you to make a sacrifice is for your benefit, for you to recognize that the wages of sin is death. And rather than you die for each individual sins, I gave you the opportunity of slitting the throat of an animal and shedding their blood instead of your blood being spilled. The reason God asked for 
uh, offerings. Why? Because he needed those offerings. You needed to recognize that, man, we've sinned and come short of the glory of God, and we need a Savior, a Lamb that is shed for us. In the New Testament, the reason God is asking you to give is not because He needs it. He could finance His ministry. He could get things done some other way. But you need to recognize God is your source. And talk is cheap. It's one thing for you to say, oh, yeah, I recognize God is my source. But then when it comes time for you to tithe, you say, I can't give because I need this money. No, you don't recognize God as your source. You're thinking that it's all up to you. You've got to produce. You're thinking, if I give this money away, how am I going to make it? Well, if there wasn't a God who promised in Luke 6, 38, that when you give, it'll be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, well, then, yes, it would be true that if you are short right now, and if you give a portion of that away, you're moving away from your goal of having your needs met instead of having them met. But see, since there is a God who promised that He would multiply back 100 times in this life, Mark chapter 10, verse 30 and 31, since God has made that promise, then what you're doing is saying, God, I'm not just saying you're my source. I believe it. And to prove it, here is what you told me to do. This is not my money. This is your money. And I'm just a steward. Here's what you told me to do with it. I'm showing that I honestly believe you. I trust you. And so I give because this is what you told me to do. You are my source, and I trust that you'll take care of me. See, that's the reason God told you to give. It's not because He needs your money. You need Him, and you need to show that you are trusting in Him. And it's one thing to say, oh, yes, I trust God. It's another thing to trust Him enough to do what He told you to do with your money. It is God's money. You are a steward. And if you could get this attitude of, I'm a steward, and it doesn't really matter what I think, it's what God says. I am not in control of this. And if you would follow that logic, and if you would just adopt the very first thing we've talked about in this parable in Luke 16, is this man was a steward. If, he had, if this money had been his, nobody would have complained about the way he was spending it. But the reason he was brought into account and he was going to be fired from his job was because that was not his money. It was the money of his master, and he was treating it as if it was his own. He was using it for personal, selfish things. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, there are multitudes of people watching this who I'm not mad at you. I'm saying these things to help you. But there are multitudes of you that you see money as yours, not as God's. And so you just choose to disobey what God says about giving and following His guidelines. And many of you have never heard anybody present it to you this way. You may not have consciously thought about it, but you should have this attitude of, I'm a steward. This isn't my money. God, what do you want me to do? And you do what He tells you, not what you choose. I'm going to be sharing some things that will really be a blessing to you. Let me mention again that I've got this book entitled Financial Stewardship. I've got it in Spanish and in English, and I'm giving this away so that nobody will sit here and think I'm saying these things trying to get your money. I'm trying to get money to you, not from you. We also have this teaching in a uh, study guide. This is so you can teach other people this. And then we also have a DVD with testimonies of people who've applied these truths and have prospered because of it. Listen to our announcer and please call or write today. So to the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. They don't even realize how many people they're really impacting. My life got impacted by it. Um, I'm hearing the gospel. I'm in the ministry. I'm fulfilling out the call of God on my life because of the partners and their seeds sown and their generosity and their hearts advance the kingdom of God. And so uh, to all of the partners at Andrew Womack Ministries, I'm just so grateful for them. Andrew is offering his book, Financial Stewardship, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free book. Andrew's complete teaching, Financial Stewardship, is available in a study guide and as a six-part CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. 
Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download, absolutely free from our website. Andrew is also offering the Financial Breakthroughs Volume 1 and Volume 2 DVDs. Each DVD includes six testimonies of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. Or you can get these valuable resources in the Financial Stewardship Package. This package includes the Financial Stewardship Book, Study Guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVDs. This package has a catalog value of $120 but you can get it today for only $85. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of December, join Andrew for a special Keras Livestream event. Andrew will be revealing his 10-year plan for the future of Keras Bible College. Tune in to the live stream by visiting awmi.net slash Campus. Next, Andrew will be hosting Grace and Faith conferences via live stream to Indonesia and to Lithuania. Then, Andrew will be in Woodland Park to host the musical production, The Heart of Christmas. The Heart of Christmas is an unforgettable mix of modern day biblical stories with heartwarming, familiar seasonal songs and American traditions that represent the true meaning of the season. Lastly, in December, drive through our campus in Woodland Park for our live nativity scene. Experience the Christmas story through this immersive live nativity with real actors, animals, and music. And in January, start off the new year with Andrew Womack and guest speaker Lance Walnow for the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference in Glendale, Arizona. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish.